Hello. Ah, uh, too quick. Hello, everybody. My name is Rod Gunn. I'm an artist, a designer, a teacher, a mentor, and today I'm going to teach you guys something cool. Yesterday, I came across some knowledge from just drawing my own stuff. And I would like to share that with you guys because, you know, I like experimenting and teaching you guys stuff what I just learned. And then we learn together and then we are awesome. We level up together. So, yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to make super cool like eyes. So, uh, we'll do it on post-its until we decide what our lesson is going to be today. So, zoom, zoom, powers activate. Do, 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 do. Okay, so... Remember the mask method? The mask method that involves just drawing like a little mask inside of your shape so that you can draw all your features and you can have like your eyes, your eyebrows, your nose, your mouth. Everything is easy to map out once you have that, right? But what if I told you that it was even easier and you would be able to like stylize it more if you could do your mask and you added a little split inside the eye. Bah. If you did that, then you know where your eye lay, like sits down automatically. So it, figuring out the other eye becomes a little bit easier. Bah. And then you can play around with styles too. Like the eyes don't have to stay completely horizontal. The eyes can be each pointing at a different direction. So one eye can go this way, one eye can go that way. You map out two dots on that line, connect the line, and then you have the shape for your eye every time. I want angled eyes. So if I do my eye like this, I have an angled eye. If I do my eye like this, I have a normal eye. So it's just another way that you guys can go about drawing your like, like eye shapes inside of your mask. Let's say we have like a profile. We just set an angle, set two points, connect them. And you have, yeah, that works. That works. Oh my God, that works. So cool. We have developed the mask method even more. Ah, 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 it's alive, it's alive, Milky, ah, it's alive. Damn right it is. So that was just something really cool that uh, came to me yesterday. And then that's also like the line that you can use to divide the top and the bottom to create your shadows and stuff like that. So it's a very cool addition to it. Uh, can you draw three quarter view from behind? Yeah. So when you're drawing from behind, you just have to draw your ears first. So you understand that you're looking from behind and then you have your mask, but your mask is looking the other way. So an easy way to do that, right? An easy way to map out like the other side of your face is to draw your mask really light for your front and then just shift that to be the side. Essentially just let your drawing show through your drawing. Um, this could be the front or this could be the side with like hair and stuff. Okay, so if you look through your shape, so this could be the front or this could be the back because your mask is not determining any angle. So it could be literally pointing towards the back of your head. Or it could be the front of your head. So that is an interesting thing about learning how to draw through your shape, right? This could be the front or 
this other side behind it could be the front. And then this could be the back. Let's give them a tail. Just So learning how to see that helps you with that. So that is literally the exercise to do for that is just drawing circles inside of circles and then learning how to like pinpoint points within those circles. Like if you go like this, this is the dead front. This is the dead back. Connect them. And then you have a surface. You have mapping points for two sides, so you can like draw like a mouth and stuff like that. You can draw jaws really easy by learning where your ears are and then connecting those to your chin. So things like that are really, really easy when you learn how to do this. So these exercises are just crucial in order to be able to get better at what you do. And when you get good at it, you'll be able to be able just draw two points, connect them, and you'll have like perfect shapes for eyes, mouths. Like you won't even think about the actual shape. You'll just think about the connecting points. Like instead of thinking of this whole thing, I'm thinking of just two points and I already know how the circumferences work. So it becomes easier to be able to draw things like eyes, mouths, and everything that you have to see through. So that is something that I recommend you guys try out because it's just a good technique to learn. Watch you for one second and you already motivated me to draw. Yay! I have done my job then. Woohoo! Yay! Bam, bam. Beam, 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 beam. All right, so what should we learn today? What should we do as our lesson? This is our intro lesson, waiting for people to come into their lat chat. I want you guys to choose on your own. I'm going to drink some coffee while I put this down for a second. So you guys choose what the lesson is going to be today. What should our lesson be? Just start naming things and I'll choose one. Do we learn today? Can you do angry male, what? Angry male facing down. Uh, that's just the single facial expression. I guess I could just do that here. Uh, single male facing down. Like the actual fact that they're male does not really mean anything. Uh, you should be able to draw that facial expression regardless of it being male or female because our facial like patterns and muscles don't differentiate. It's just the way that like the eyelashes maybe look or the jaw maybe looks, but that is essentially it. Like that is all you do. Character creation and hands. It seems like the biggest ones. Anatomy proportions of the body, character design. So that would be proportions. Hands and feet. So it's going to be between hands and feet. So hands or uh, body proportions. It's going to be one of those two. And the one that I see mentioned the most, that will be the one that we use. So leave a heart for hands and share the stream for body proportions. How about that? I will choose respectively based on this. And I know that it's easier to share, so I'll judge appropriately. Um, I'll wait for like maybe like 30 seconds. <clears throat> I need a new intro. I need a new intro to my, um, I need a new intro to my videos. Ooh, and while we wait too. If you guys want to get an original piece of Rod Gun art, we are auctioning this guy off over on Instagram. So the bidding is at $25 right now, and these come shipped to you guys as well. So if you guys want an original piece of art, keep an eye out on my Instagram because I'm going to be posting a couple. All right. So hands ends up winning. I'll talk a little bit about proportions as well because I don't think we'll take the whole page to draw hands. Um, but if you guys 
want the main theme to be one or the other, make sure to share or stream. How about a chicken's beak cartoon style? A chicken beak cartoon style. So, I don't really know what a chicken looks like, but I'm going to assume it's kind of like this. Right? So the beak at the front is a cone. So beaks in general, whenever you're drawing a beak, it's more of a cone. That if you think about it like that, you can add things to it, like little riblets or like hooks, you know? So actual beaks are really, really fun to draw. Really fun to draw because they're really simple. And then you start simplifying them for cartoons, it becomes an even cooler part because it just gives you the entirety of the mouth. You don't have to think about where everything else is going to go after that. So it's really, really cool to draw birds. Uh, it's really, really fun. So I highly suggest it. Uh, okay, so it seems to me that we are going to go with proportions because the shares are much harder to do and you guys got me all the way up to 165. So we will do body proportions and character design. And in character design, And then we will also do a side lesson of hands. Bam. There you go. So let's talk a little bit about body proportions because I have a feeling that a lot of people don't really understand that you can have a lot of different body proportions within character design. And it doesn't mean that you have to have something be eight heads tall, right? No, you can have something be smaller, still be proportioned, and still be accurate. The thing is, when it comes down to character design, it's all about style, right? It's all about generating a certain look, a design, like an element of <coughs> originality that doesn't really show up on other people's designs. And in order to do that, you can't always just draw the same thing. You can't always draw the Marvel way, right? You can't always just have, like, the superhero proportions and shit. Sometimes you need, like, a little, like, dude or you need, like, a big monstrous guy. Right? That's also big, but he's not, like, necessarily the superhero proportions type of guy. Right. So when you have different levels of like, you know, proportions, you get different feels for your characters. <coughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Right. So you can have characters that are tiny and proportioned like average humans. You can have characters that are big and tall, and gigantic, and majestic, and superhero-like, and stuff, right? All these proportions are different, but it doesn't mean that the characters are wrong at all. Like, either, I mean, like, you can turn in, in any of these into different things, like cartoons, characters, animation, comics, uh, pretty much anything that you really feel like. Let's give this guy, like... Some Mad Max sort of stuff. Uh, <clears throat> some armor. Let's go Mohawk. Okay, so character design and proportions um, are much, much easier to get to and understand when you take into consideration uh, three different parts of the body. And it Proportions in general get broken down into the understanding of perspective. You're going to need perspective in order to understand this a little bit. You're going to understand a little bit better if you have a little bit of knowledge of anatomy. So if you just understand a tiny bit of anatomy, and I'm going to explain that anatomy to you guys so you guys understand it. And then we're going to have to use a little bit of imagination. So you're going to have to actually use a little bit of your brain in order to actually achieve cool character designs. You can't just go with like what formulas tell you and stuff. You need to actually put a little bit of your own thought. So how do we apply each one of these things? So 
the basic concept of variating characters is going to come down to three elements in your body. It's going to come down to the size of your torso. So your torso is going to be your hip bones and your rib cage. And these two are independent of each other. So if you have a small torso and a large hip bone, you get hourglass shapes. If you get large torsos and small hip bones, you get superhero shapes. So the variations of these are what essentially provide you every single body part and character that you will ever, ever need. You just need to get very familiar with the proportions of these based on what you want to create. And the head, obviously, that's the third one. So we have three elements that if you combine them in different ways, you're going to get different looks. Right? Everything you change about that character is going to change depending on those three elements. If you change one of those three, let's make the hip bones bigger, you change the character completely. You went from a male figure to a female figure immediately. So that is the three hard surfaces that you need to keep in mind. Hard surface method. I can't spell for shit, but it's okay. So why do I want to highlight those three parts? Well, not just because they're the biggest like bone structures in your body, but if you learn where things connect to these like body parts, like your hip bones, and you know where to connect things to your rib cage, including your neck and head like that, then you're going to be in a fantastic place because then all you got to do is change the sizes and variations of them. So if you wanted to create, let's say, I don't know, like a little pinup girl, you could have a little rib cage. You could have bigger hip bones and then have long legs. And that would give me the appearance with a small head. That's going to give me the appearance of somebody that's elegant, somebody that's like a runway model, somebody that's um, going to have an air of sexiness to them. So... And that doesn't have to be necessarily a female character. This could be, if I just reduce the hips, then that's just a sassy dude. I just reduce the hip bones, and then I all of a sudden have a more squared figure, which is normally associated with masculine traits. So once you understand these shapes, you can modify them to do anything you need. You don't have to be relegated to just drawing the same characters over and over. Once you understand that a rib cage and some hip bones are independent from each other, you can just draw really cool, interesting poses And you won't have to worry if they're correct or not, because you know that they're supposed to connect in those places. So anything you draw going back to those connection points is going to look fine. It's like you can be wrong, but you'll still be wrong in the right way. Or you'll be wrong in an accurate way, which uh, means that you'll have the things there. Maybe you just have to work on the proportions and like the length of things and stuff like that. But in the overall sense of things, you're putting things in the right place. And that is a huge, huge step forward. So let's keep going. So proportions are going to consist of those three things. So let's explain each one of those parts and then how that connects to the other. So let's start with the head. And then we will work our way down onto the rest of the body. So let's work with the head. And how does the head connect to our neck or rib cage? So we're going to draw 
two shapes. We're going to draw a shape for our head and a shape for our rib cage. And we're going to draw a couple different ones so you guys get an idea that it's not based on a certain style. It's not based on a certain like way of seeing things. I'm just going to draw the same thing with different approaches. So you guys see that it's not necessarily a style-based thing. Let's have a bunch of them. Okay, so we have a bunch of faces and we have a bunch of rib cages. Let's give them a middle line just so they have like a general look. They're looking somewhere. Cool. So the first thing we want to know if we want to connect our rib cage to our head is we need to understand where the collarbone sits. And I know that is not a bone that we normally have to associate and we normally don't really think about it because we don't really get it taught in most the drawing classes, even though it's like fucking important. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta find the front of your shape. Don't just draw a line. Like if you have like an object and you need to find the front of it, don't just draw a line. Like find the center of it by actually drawing through your shape and finding the front and the back of your shape, right? Give yourself that depth that you have in your element and trace through it. And then you do exercises like this by just drawing circles inside of circles. Like you practice doing that or boxes inside of boxes and you connect boxes by drawing boxes inside of boxes. You find and you figure out that depth that you need. So if you have a cube, if you want to learn the surfacing of it, just draw a box inside of that box connecting to the edges. And you will be able to subdivide that shape into a smaller shape. You can do that infinitely with the amount of uh, dexterity and skill, and you can start doing really cool things with your shapes. Right? Understanding this depth is what helps you build your bodies better. And we are going to do it in a simple way by literally just drawing a circular shape inside of our shape for our rib cage. So we're gonna just draw a circle inside of each one of these rib cages to identify the front and the back of our spine. Okay, we get to decide which one of these lines is the front and we get to decide which one's the back. So in this case, I'm going to make this one the front by creating the little front part of my rib cage, which comes in like a little V. And then it just follows through to the other side. We're going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to choose this one as the middle one. I'm going to choose the little bottom part of my rib cage, and I'm just going to follow my shape through to give it depth. Same thing this one. I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to draw that little V, and I'm going to follow my shape through so that I have a rib cage. Same thing here. And then this is a simple shape to play with, so you don't have to overthink things. Literally, this shape is just a sphere or an oval with a circle inside, and you draw that little line. This little curve that I choose to draw is just to help me with the perspective at which uh, everything is looking. You don't have to draw. You can literally just draw this and then draw a little triangle. Okay? You don't have to go into the neck that level to do. I just do it because it looks cool. So the next step is identifying your collarbone. Like we're already there. Like it doesn't take much to get to it. Uh, the next line, that, this line that you drew already for the middle is going to give you the middle of your rib cage. So going up this a little bit towards the upper part of your rib cage is going to give you a little dot. This little dot is going to be very important because this is where your neck is going to start connecting. But it's also going to be where the little side bones for my collarbone are going to stick out. And they normally reach the side of my rib cage or a little bit above it but it wraps around my rib cage. It goes around, around my rib cage to the middle part of my rib cage or my body, right? So only to the middle, it doesn't go all the way to the back. If you're looking at this from the front, there's the little divot. It only goes about halfway, okay? It doesn't go all the way to the back. And then from here, 
you get a little baseball diamond connecting with the back of your neck. Each one of these has a purpose, and I'm going to explain to you guys what that purpose is. Remember, it wraps around my shape. Nothing leaves that sphere. Let me put it like that. Nothing leaves that sphere bone-wise. That is essentially your structure and anything that's poking out, in this case this, this is going to be something that pokes out of my skin. So whenever I put my actual like body on this, let's say I have my ribcage, right? If I have a bone that's sticking out here and I choose my collar one to be out there, that means that bone is going to be sticking out of my actual body because it's no longer cemented inside that shape. Anything that pokes out is going to be shown like a bump or something. Same thing happens with uh, arms and stuff. Right? When you have like your connection points with your arms, your elbow is literally the hard part in between all your squishy bone. So your hard parts stick out. Your rib cage has a bunch of them. Your rib cage has the bottom divots that stick out normally when you're drawing abs. Right? You get that. You get these little things right here for your collarbone. Those are bones. The next thing that sticks out is when you have like your back muscles. You have that top of the rib cage right here is that seventh vertebrae at the back top of your head. So the one that sticks out the most is right there. You end up with little indications here as well. Normally you have muscles and stuff that go around, but that is, again, the rib cage from behind. Your hip bones create a bunch of the dents that happen in the front. So where your leg connects, that is part of your hip bones, boom, boom. Your rib cage creates bends whenever you actually just bend your body. So if your body bends a little bit, right? If you bend to the side and you have your hip bone there, the reason that everything compresses around this is because they go around your hip bone, that's just a hard surface, and then the hard surface of your rib cage, and everything here gets squished. So this doesn't squish, this doesn't move, but everything else does. This. So that is essentially what happens with your body. So if you think about it like that, you can start figuring out a lot of shit. Now, we have the top of our head. We have our collarbone and we mapped it out nicely. So now the next step is going to be to figure out where my ears are in my character above. My ears are going to tell me where my jaw is, but it's more important to understand just where the bottom of the ear is more than anything. So let's give our character some ears. And now from the bottom of my ear to the middle of my collarbone, that is going to be the inside neck muscles. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Let's do a profile so you guys see that it doesn't matter what you draw, what angle, and everything. You can twist your bodies, it's okay. It just gives you interesting poses. But you gotta find where the other ear is first, so it doesn't look ridiculous and weird. <laughs> okay, so as you guys can see, finding both ears, the bottom of the ear, connecting it to that middle point right there, is going to give you that first semblance of a neck. But then the next step is learning how to draw these side parts, these side muscles. Like, how wide do you draw your neck? Well, it's actually quite easy. It's really easy. And in order for me to tell you guys what that trick is, I need you guys to share and like the stream. If you guys want to keep on going with body proportions, 
keep on sharing the stream. If you guys want to transition into hands, hey, click that little heart button. Show me what you guys want. I want you guys to do that. And meanwhile, I'm going to pitch my book because you guys are stuck here with me for a little bit. So this is how I pay my bills. So you guys are free to buy these books. This is my like print production version. And the books that I sell are called Art Block. And they're meant to help you guys unlock your creativity. Oh, look at Milky. Milky, yay. So these are meant for you guys to learn and draw from. And it also journals my life quite a bit because it talks. The beauty of these is that if you find the matching stream, you guys can draw along with me and see what we did. So it's not just a book for inspiration and to like help you guys like figure out things like body parts or pinup poses or whatever. You guys can go into these drawings and actually draw them. The whole purpose of the book is to help you guys understand how things work. And I learn in a very specific way. I learn through mimicry and repetition. So I created these off my sketchbooks so that you guys can go in here and do exactly as I do. Practice through motion, practice through mapping out my drawings. I teach you guys this for a reason. So you guys can go ahead and do all these sort of stuff. So even if it comes down to pinup girls or whatever, maybe you have to like draw a logo and you don't know what to draw. Flip to a page and do a logo based on anything there. Boom, done. Art block, gone. And you know, that's the way that I pay my bills. So you guys are encouraged to go to my links and buy it. Um, art block number three is coming out soon. That one's going to be the big book of little lessons or the big book of derpy animals. One of those two is going to be the next one. And I am excited. Okay, some more coffee and let's keep going with body proportions. And I'll tell you guys a little tip to the neck. You guys are going to be fucking flabbergasted. Like, I promise that after after this stream, if you guys follow these steps, next will be like incredibly simple. Like next will not be an issue anymore. Looking up and stuff like that is not a neck issue. Looking up is learning how to draw the jaw. But I'll explain that to you guys too. Okay, so the trick to drawing the neck part is understanding that this little area that you divided on the rib cage, let's say we have our rib cage again, and we created our collarbone, and we created this little area at the top, right? Boom, this little area. Well, between here and here, there has to be three things, and only three things. There has to be a cylinder for your neck, for the width of your neck, right? that has to be like, one of the elements, and then you have to have two side muscles. So you have to have one side muscle connecting to your collarbone, and you have the other side muscle connecting to your collarbone. So as long as you keep that in mind, you can draw necks of any width on any character and just understand that wherever you end up with your collarbone, let's move the collarbone there because it's getting blocked. All I need to understand is that between these two points, there has to be a neck cylinder and two side muscles. So I have my rib cage. I'm going to draw through my shape. I have my ear. I have ear number two. Connect the ears to my collarbone. And then I did to decide how wide do I want my neck? I want my neck to be this wide. Cool. So if it's that wide, it connects to the back of my ears and you wouldn't even see the neck at that point. So cool. The guessing work is done. Like if you don't see it, you don't need to draw it. Let's draw one going up. This is the reason that a lot of people have issues with the neck looking up because they don't get used to drawing their jaws like this, right? They don't understand how to visualize a simple sphere, draw through it, choose two points, and then choose your chin and connect them. It gives you this little pocket. That could be where your next cylinder goes into your two side muscles. Boom, boom. 
and then the connection point for my ear down to my collarbone. And now you have an upward looking face. People don't take the time to draw through their shapes to figure out their other elements. And since they don't do that, they can't see like the blending of your shapes right there, right? You, you might still be drawing from styles, which means you're drawing like your jaws in lines. You're not seeing your shapes. You're not seeing through them. You're not using your basic foundation work, right? If you did that, it'd be a little bit easier to understand how to visualize these things. Uh, do you record and post your lives anywhere? Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, most of them are on YouTube. If you guys go to the YouTube and it's the same name as my thing, that is that is where I uh, put all the good ones. Uh, I don't put all of them because not all of them are worth like uploading. Some of them uh, are just repetitive. Well, we've already made a video that's better than that one. But uh, yeah, overall, they're on YouTube. So you guys can go and you guys can go learn hundreds of different things. Like, no joke, you guys can go and you guys can look through thousands of hours of content um, for free. And you all that haven't seen his YouTube are in for a treat, right? Would love to rewatch this on YouTube. Think, yeah, yeah, this will be on YouTube. So that is how you connect the neck. Uh, the same concept applies for even like the looks from behind and stuff like that. So let's say that we have a rib cage and we're going to be looking behind. So this is going to be the back of the head, back of the spine. We draw a baseball diamond, but we draw through our shape. So I know that this is the front. This is my collarbone in the front. This is my collarbone from the sides. This is the back of my spine and this is the back of my head. So now I can draw, if I get familiar enough with how to draw my faces from the front and the side using the mask method, you can literally just draw your mask and draw it like that. The mask helps you figure out those things. Um, so now that I have both ears, I can connect the bottom of my ear to the front of my collarbone, giving me that front line right there for my neck. And then I get to choose the width of my neck cylinder based on coming off of my head behind my ear. So my neck cylinder will be about that wide, giving me space for my two side muscles. And I have a view from the back. Woohoo! And then you just gotta like move things in perspective. Uh, you're amazing. Is it me or the stream lagging? Yeah, sometimes it lags. Uh, it's just my internet. Um, so I'm sorry. Like, um, yeah, it's just my internet. You want to keep your style cartoony though. Okay. Let me explain to you why that is a silly thing to ask because you can apply the same thing to the most extreme cartoons ever. So if you're ever just wondering how to like take your super extreme cartooniness and make it look right, like take your silly characters that you draw like goofy and like animated. <laughs> Dancing with finger guns and stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh. Doing the boogie, shaking, animated, moving, out, bam, bam. But you still want to connect it to the actual like body in some way that makes sense. Go from the bottom of your ears to your collarbone because you would still have a collarbone regardless of how simple your drawing is. Uh, and then just angle it in, like curve it in. You still base it off reality, but it's incredibly cartoony. So you can use your basics, your like foundations to draw your cartoons too.
So you can take even something that's completely unrealistic proportions, like something that just doesn't make sense normally. Let's say like you're drawing like a puppy or something. Right? And you want to connect that to a body, even if it's a simple one. Think about a human anatomy. Think about human anatomy. Think about this like if it had an ear or the bottom of its ear. Think of this like a human rib cage, and think about the little baseball diamond at the top of our like body. Connect the ear to the collarbone, and then you have your space for your arms. So you're using your basic human anatomy to draw things that are not human anymore. So that translates heavily into so many different things. Uh, it doesn't have to stay to just humans or just like relegated to that. You can use that to draw absolutely everything. Yeah, we're going to go on to hands in a second. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys how the, the rest of the things connect. Um, I wanted to show you guys how your, call, how your hip bones connect to your chest and how that helps with your positioning. So let's move on to the actual rib cage to hip bones, though. Uh, hip bones, you have your rib cage with your collarbone. <laughs> Your hip bones in general are very easy, incredibly easy to draw. Uh, people just overcomplicate the shit out of it. Um, you can look at your arms and your hip bones the same way, by the way. Uh, this is going to blow people's fucking minds. Like, like this, this made me go like, what? Well, like the hip bones are literally just a cylinder with the fronts moved in, creating kind of like a noodle. So you take your hip bones, you draw a cylinder, you curve those in a little bit, and now you have a perfect hip bone. Your legs can come out of there in any way style you want, and you can be nice and simple. You could have it nice and muscular, you know, like actually like proportioned. You can have anything you want and as long as it's coming out of that hole, it's going to look proper. So what I discovered through doing this stuff is that it's not, we don't study anatomy to learn how to draw muscles. No, 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 no. We study anatomy to learn where things connect to the body, how they move, how they interact, how they rotate, how they pivot. That is why we learn anatomy. We have to learn where the muscle structures pivot from so that we know how to move them. We need to understand how those basic shapes overlap in perspective so that we can get depth. We need to understand how those body parts change as you rotate them in space so that you can get cool expressions. So understanding where these things work was incredibly simple, incredibly simple. Literally, it was just a cylinder. And then I was like, well, can I do the same thing for the arms? And you can. You take this collarbone, and then you just draw a noodle, and that gives you your chest muscles too, by the way. Draw a noodle, and that gives you your perfect placement for your arms. and your chest. And it can be translated to a woman by just literally making the hip bones a little bit wider. So it's just, it's, a, it's so easy. It's so easy. Like it's so nutty. Like here, we are going to draw a rib cage, some cylinders for my arms and my arms and my legs. And then that gives me my collarbone. 
This gives me the spacing for my neck, the three parts, tune, tune, tune. This gives me the rotation point of my shoulder, which means that I can start positioning my arm in any way I want, regardless of what position I have it in. And it also provides me like that little tiny space for my chest into my abs. So it's a very cool way of seeing it. Like, and I don't know why people don't teach it like that. Like, I don't understand it. Like, it's such a simple way of seeing it. Like, rib cage, cylinder one for your hip bones, cylinder two for your arms. Uh, let's make the hip bones bigger. So we have like, bam, bam. We got mega thighs. And then the arms just are the width of this cylinder. Like, so, ugh, it's so good. It like, it works so easy. And it's just, like, I don't understand why people don't teach it like this. Like, why do they make it complicated? Oh, if you don't want to make it look stiff, then don't don't draw them like even. Uh, if you want to draw something that's incredibly like bendy, like just draw something that's incredibly twisted, right? Like you don't have to follow like a guideline. You can follow any any sort of guideline you want. Like once you understand how to move those elements, they can be as bendy or as straight as you want. They don't have to be doing absolutely anything stiff, right? So it's a matter of just your imagination at that point. And that's going to come from a lot of uh, watching just magazines, watching people act, watching people on stage, watching people dance. Uh, a lot of people have really cool life drawing classes that you can attend and sometimes like people come dressed and stuff so you can like take advantage of that and just practice these poses, right? You don't have to do something super complicated. Now posing is going to be incredibly simple for you. Like once you master this, posing becomes really easy. I, I went to art school 20 years ago, but I went to school for animation, but they taught me 3D animation. Uh, they didn't really teach me much 2D animation. So I didn't get like the, like I did get like some like animation principles, you know, like squash and stretch and like some drawing classes. But a lot of it was mostly learned by me after college. Learning how to illustrate was like something that I had to take up because I couldn't find work as a technical artist. I couldn't find work as a 3D animator. I couldn't work, find work as a texturer. I couldn't work, like, it was just a saturated market. So I had to make my own way um, with what I knew. And that was the beginning of the terrifying and horrible uh, time of my life in which I did not know how to survive with my art. And that is the big reason why I do what I do. What I do what I teach and what I show you guys is because I don't want you guys to go over the same stuff. I don't want you guys to stress. I don't want you guys to like doubt. I don't want you guys to think that you aren't like, you know, you don't have a way to learn outside of actually paying hundreds and not fucking thousands of dollars for that knowledge. Like I don't want anyone else to ever have to pay to learn how to do with anything with their imagination. So if I can avoid it, if I can avoid it completely, I would probably like not charge anybody absolutely anything for anything, but you know, it's just life. So I need to make a living at some point. And, you know, I charge for like one-on-one -on -one classes and we will have like study sessions where it'll be like more targeted towards people that just want small groups. So we will have those sort of, um, options for people that do want to have like smaller sessions and that will help me uh, pay for my rent. And I think doing that sort of stuff will uh, help make me fulfilled within this and still be able to actually pay my rent, which is very important because you still need to be able to survive. 
uh, without being in survival mode. Uh, being in survival mode fucking sucks. Yeah, you're such a good teacher. Love watching you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. So before we move on to hands, let's review a little bit of what we talked about. Okay. So character designs in general don't really have proportions in general. Like you don't have a general proportion for character designs. You have three elements in your body, which are your head, your rib cage, and your hip bones. And if you change the size of those, you get different character designs. You just need to learn how to actually draw things like legs and arms to complement that knowledge. Right? You need to actually be able to understand what you're drawing in order to get different character designs. You can have characters with big heads, little rib cages, and little hip bones, and create like little chibi characters or like things like that. Or you can create tall, muscular characters with a little head, gigantic rib cage, and little hip bones, and create more different characters like that. Understanding these three basic parts, your head, your rib cage, and your hip bones, are going to be the most important parts of actually understanding character design. Knowing those three elements gives you a gigantic like knowledge base that is going to help you with not just your drawings, but your storytelling, and you're going to just progress in the right direction. So I highly suggest that if you guys are planning to be character designers, stop thinking like, oh, I got to draw a male or a female. No, stop thinking like that and start thinking about your actual anatomy and how to learn how to simplify it so that you guys can modify your drawings to any shape, way, or size you want, and you still have that basic knowledge underneath including muscle structure, not even muscle structure, just bone structure, like learning where your body parts move from are very, is very important. Like understanding those noodles for placement of your arms and stuff is very important. I struggle with legs. What? I struggle with leg poses that aren't boring. Okay, cool. I'm going to show you guys the easiest way to learn how to draw your legs in like any direction you want. Draw your hip bones. Okay. Any hip bones on any character, like just, just make sure you have your cylinder. And then draw a very basic leg. Just draw like a basic leg looking down. That's easy, right? That should be easy enough. Well, if you want to make this interesting, just start moving your leg around and see what happens. Start moving your legs coming from that same origin. Start moving them around a little bit. See what happens when you move them into space. See what happens when you put a leg out and one isn't. Posing is hard because you don't understand or don't have a nice range of motion when it comes down to your elements. This is how you learn that. This is how you learn that range of motion. You ghost your drawings into them so that you can start generating the cool poses that you want to get. And if you don't look, it doesn't look good, then you change it based on that same concept. Maybe I want this leg to look down too. Right? So using your basic shapes and your noodles to, or your, yeah, your noodle connection points, you can get a lot of stuff done. The squats in an anime thing, uh, the squats. So just want to draw something squatting. Um, well, what do you, what happens when you squat? Let's talk about this. When you squat, I work out. So I like to pay attention to what I do when I'm working out. So when I'm working out and I'm squatting, I normally have my back semi-straight and I have my hip bones pointing back a little bit. So I give myself, my booty is going to be sticking out. Then from there, I'm going to have my legs, if I'm like at, at a deep squat, my legs are going to be going at different angles. So one of them is going to go in this way, one of them might be going this way. Right. So then from here, we have our thigh, 
we have our perspective, we have our depth. Then from here, we already have our hip bone, we already know where our butt's gonna go, and we already know where our rib cage is. So we have a lot of information without really doing much. Then from here, I have my kneecap at the top of this. I'm gonna draw my shin bone. Like all these, all these leg positions are really easy. Uh, once you figure out what your kneecap is, draw your shin bone as a cylinder or going down. Right? It tapers down because it's going to get smaller because it's going into the distance. So we're just drawing a cylinder. We're not drawing the entire leg. Figure out the perspective of that cylinder by drawing through your circles and find the base of it. And then draw your foot by expanding that one. Let's make it go ahead this way. You expand the bottom one and you have the base of your foot and then you just have to give it width. And then you do the same thing for the calf. So to give this the calf depth, you take the perspective of this, widen it to the back and then connect it underneath the thigh bone. And that is a weird squat, but let's see. Hold on. Hip bones back. Uh, pop, 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 pop. There you go. So we have thigh bone. We have kneecap. We draw a cylinder going down to the bottom. This bottom part. That cylinder at the bottom, the base, is going to give us the width for my feet. And this is going to give me the width for uh, the dimensions for my uh, calf. And then I just expand these a little bit to give myself the bendings. And then I can find my other leg. Maybe you can show us what? Maybe you can show us a sitting character in the front. Yeah, sitting character. Um, if we have a character, if you need them sitting, draw your hip bones, draw your kneecaps, draw the front of your legs and connect them. That is, that is how you draw somebody sitting down. Now, let's say you wanted to cross his legs. Well, bring that kneecap up and bring that other foot into perspective by doing that. If you want them kicking up, all you got to do is follow your lens forward. Right. So it's just a matter of understanding all those poses by just practicing with them. And the same thing happens with arms, by the way. Same thing happens with arms. Like if you want to practice different arms, you need to learn where they pivot from so that you can move your arms around. If you don't know where they pivot from or you just generalize like the middle of the arm, no, it's the actual elbow that pivots. So the, the difference is that whenever you have something move, right, and you want it to move from the center, when you rotate it, you're going to end up with a situation where you're like creating extra space because you're trying to bend these two parts at the center. So that doesn't work. Moving things to the side like this allows you to pivot and create overlap. Right? If you create overlap, arms and stuff like that become easier to draw. Because that's how they work. They overlap each other. Be it a leg or be it an arm. They overlap each other and create depth. If you think about it like this and you pivot it and you never know where your elbows are because we get taught like this, right? We get taught to like draw our arms and our elbows like this. 
that is what they teach us. Draw cylinders and then everything else kind of like works into place. I don't like that. I never understood that. Okay. I never, ever, ever understood that. Like it just never made sense. Like I'm like, what the fuck? Like, no, that just doesn't work. So what I like to draw is I just like to draw teardrop shapes. I like to draw teardrop shapes because they have a slight overlap and they taper down. So I can draw my hands and stuff like that really easy. And we'll transition to hands in a second. So draw teardrop shapes. That just gives you a better understanding of how like to draw legs and stuff like that. Okay. So that is my tip on legs, positioning, and uh, body proportions. Uh, I hope that actually makes sense to a lot of you guys. Let's move on to hands. Can you show this with the jaw? Have trouble drawing mouths open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's uh, use that little tiny open space left right here. All right. So if you guys want to learn how to draw the jaw open and closed, so you have your ears. You're going to have your jaw going from one side to the other, creating a closed mouth. If you open your jaw, this bottom part of your mouth is going to get bigger. So you're going to end up with your jaw opening to here because it hinges back. And you can get it to the point where it looks kind of like ridiculous, but you could technically have your jaw open like an anaconda. The nose, well, the nose comes out of your nose canal. So if you have like your mask and you have this little tiny triangle that you draw in your mask, your nose can go anywhere. If it comes out of here and it connects back here, you can draw it any size you want. Let's say you want it like, like this, or maybe you want like a massive nose. Like maybe you want something that's like huge, right? Looking up, it still connects to those two points. If you want something even bigger, you still connect them to those two points. Those two points are literally the only place where your nose can go to. So if you have a character that has that little nose canal, you can draw any nose you want as long as you connect it back to those points and you have awesome noses and you can take a lot of the guesswork out of that. So let's move on to hands to round out the, the rest of the page because we, that would be, that was our side lesson. So our side lesson will be hands. Let's draw hands, 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 hands suck. Hands are hard, hard as... <laughs> Uh, side lesson, hands. So lately, I think I have uh, mastered my ability to draw hands. Like I honestly, I think I mastered it. And I'm going to show you guys the approach that I have taken that I love that has done it for me. So I have very slowly started to adapt the way that I have been learning things onto other concepts. Um, I am learning how the connection points work and how that affects what every other body part works. So I'm learning that the rotation of the wrist happens from the top part of the wrist, right? So if I end right here, this part right here is going to be the rotation factor of my hand. So understanding that little rotation factor and that being the main point of my arm that I'm going to be focusing on, which happens to end up being the top of the wrist right here. So if I am able to understand that point, I should be able to map a certain part of the actual hand anatomy that will stick to that one part consistently. And I found it. I found it in the way of drawing. Here's my wrist. Here's that point. And finding the middle knuckle of my hand first has been just 
the most amazing, like eye-opening thing in the world. And I call this the little lollipop approach. And I'm going to show you guys how to draw an entire hand from a lollipop really easy and how to understand them if you guys help me by sharing the stream and liking it. Uh, I need you guys' help to be able to reach as many more people as I can. Uh, we have gotten to 200,000 followers already. And that was amazing! 200,000. 200,000. That's more than stadiums. That is more than... Um, holy shit. Like, you guys understand that there's about 30,000 people that have looked at this stream today. That's nuts to me. Like... Fudge. Like, woo. Okay, okay. Like, besides from the point that I, like, I never thought that I would ever reach this level of notoriety in my life for what I do, you guys actually seem to enjoy what I do, which is awesome. <laughs> like, I cannot express how cool it is to just be able to go online, teach someone something really cool and then go back to my normal day-to-day -day schedule like it's just been a fantastic roller coaster of like just growth and stuff and it's just awesome so thank you that's because you're an amazing teacher oh oh you oh you um i'm gonna take some coffee i'm gonna rest my hand for a slight second but meanwhile i want you guys to tell me what is hard about hands for you guys what about hands is hard. I know what it was for me. For me, it was a lot of the perspective aspects, but I was playing with perspective based on things like boxes, right? I was just trying to draw everything from a box. Uh, so a lot of the drawings that I would do would come out a little stiff because I'm trying to base everything from a box. Everything doesn't work like that. So I'm going to show you guys a more fluid way to go about it, which is not drawing from boxes or circles, uh, even though circles are a little bit better than hands. The palm of the hand for you. Okay, so the palm of the hand is actually quite easy to understand. Um, the pan palm of the hand is very moldable. It moves a lot, but there's a couple different elements that stay true. This big section right here, what I like to call this is like, I like to call this the Paul, like the thumb muscle, right? All this area, that's the thumb part. Like all this is essentially three parts. You have one, which is the tip, two, which is the stick, and three, which is the base. And the base goes all the way around, right? So you have those three sections to your thumb, even though this bottom two are kind of like connected, but you still have that Wrangle, or you can consider this like the base. No. Whichever way works best for you. That could be the stick. Then you have this little patty part, right? This little patty part, guess what that is? That is just your knuckle. That is just like the skin around your knuckle. So that knuckle that we drew at first is a mapping point for your hand. So you can draw it from the top, or you can draw it from the bottom. Pen. I demand you draw. There you go. I almost have like really wet skin or something. Uh, anyways, you can see it from the bottom. You can see it from the top. So to one side of your knuckle, let's draw that first. So we have our wrist and we have our palm, which is going to consist of three sections, but we know that one is a definite. So we already know that this is supposed to be there. So we're going to draw a line from the middle of our wrist down to the middle knuckle. Then how many fingers do we have? We have one finger to the thumb side. So I just draw this same thing to the thumb side once, to the pinky side twice. And then guess what? The width of this circle that we draw is also the width of our hand. That's my knuckle, top and bottom. Top 
and bottom. So that already gives me the top and the bottom of my hand. So I can just literally close that off. Then from here, my fingers come out. My fingers can come as cylinders, they can come as sticks, whatever style that I feel like drawing. Maybe I just want some little chibi ones. Any way that you want to draw your shapes and your characters, you get to choose whatever styling you want from that point on. Understanding where your body parts come from and how they move is step like one through 20. Style is the last thing that you need to worry about. So let's do it again. Let's draw a different type of, like a different position. So let's draw our wrist going this way, top of our hand, into our first knuckle. Let's draw one to my thumb side, two to my pinky side. This is the top of my hand, this is the bottom of my hand, giving me already the shape of my hand. Then I can start drawing my fingers, uh, depending on what I want them to be doing. in order so that you don't draw anything overlapping something you're not supposed to and draw your thumb. And when you're actually just drawing for fun, it'll look like this. If you're drawing the palm, it's your knuckle line into your fingers. You can curve them any way you want. Then it's going to come down to your thumb side. You're going to have your base of your thumb with a little patty part for your thumb. And then you're going to have the other side, which I like to call the pinky muscle. So this one goes to your pinky. This one goes to your thumb. And then the middle three create the little pocket for your rest of your fingers. I'm so bad with angles. I can't deal with them in math. Um, well, I mean, you don't really have to know, like, angles. Um, let's draw more hands. Let's draw a wrist. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, when you're drawing fists, your knuckle is the top of your hand and the bottom of your hand, and then your fingers just rotate around that. A sticker says snipe for her nuggies. <laughs> Wraps around the entire object, swipe left to high chat. Um, let's see, let's zoom in. Middle knuckle, one to my thumb side, two to my pinky side, and then we can apply any sort of styling we want to our thing. Hi. Yes, you can even do it out of boxes still, but just change the... Remember that your knuckles are inside of your palm. They're not outside of your palm. They're inside your palm, right? Look at the edge of my palm right now. It's right there. So your knuckle is inside of your palm in both parts. So it's not outside. So when you draw your knuckles, draw it inside. And then draw your fingers coming out if they're bent or if you don't even see any fingers, 
you can have literally your knuckles just be the edge of your hand. Oh, what? Anyways, that is my tip for hands. That is the easiest way to like actually figure them out. Uh, figure out the top of your wrist, figure out where your first knuckle is, choose your other knuckles based on that middle knuckle, and then close your shape off for your hand. Then from there, you guys can move your things into perspective. You guys can fold them. You guys can use your basic knowledge of anatomy to be able to manipulate a basic cylinder. And that normally is the part where people get lost because you need to understand basic shapes and perspective to draw hands properly. If you don't understand how to move a cylinder in perspective, if you don't know how to do that and you don't know how to bend an object and foreshorten it, that is going to make drawing fingers really hard. Not knowing how to do that is going to make you draw hands really, really difficult. Uh, so learn how to foreshorten your elements. Learn how to do this. Draw little beanbag worms. Like once you learn how to draw little beanbag worms, then those turn into fingers. Those also turn into legs, by the way. And arms. So, thank you guys so much for being my drawing buddies today. Uh, we have come to the end of our lesson in our end of our page today. This video will be up on YouTube later tonight. Thank you guys so much. Uh, yesterday's lesson should be up there today. And if you guys want to go subscribe, make sure to go to the live section too, because there's like about a hundred different videos in that live section of my channel. Uh, I just didn't know that they were being uploaded to the live section instead of like my normal videos. So if you guys want hundreds more videos, they're in the live section because we went live before. So have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you guys so much for being my drawing buddies. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your attention. I appreciate you guys helping me reach more people. Uh, I will always end my streams now by openly saying that I am looking for a teaching job. I'm looking for a teaching position as an art teacher at a college level. So if you guys know of any school that is looking for an awesome art teacher, that has more than the capabilities needed and does not mind relocating, even if it's a different country, <laughs> right? I just want to teach. I want to follow my dream. So if you guys know of a school that's willing to take a chance on somebody that doesn't have a master's but has all the qualifications in the world, let me know. I'm going to just throw that out into the world because the squeaky wheel gets the oil. So if I don't put it out there, no one else will and, you know, nothing will ever happen. So... Let's make it happen. Thank you guys so much for coming. My, uh, there, buy my books. Those are cool. You guys should buy them because they're awesome. Um, and they helped me buy a car. I'm looking to buy a car soon. So um, I'm I'm not even like looking for like a Mercedes or anything. I'm just I just need something to move on. So if you guys buy books, I get that. If you guys uh, uh, buy stuff at my auctions, like if you guys go to Instagram and bid on my little auctions for my little pieces, these help as well. And any commissions and stuff like that that you guys might have, I also take those on. So make sure to hit me up if you guys have anything in mind. Right now is one of the few times in my life that I actually open up to commissions. So if you guys have something in mind, hit me up. Otherwise, lose your chance because uh, I normally don't do that shit. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Be a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people that you guys are. And at the end of the day, I want you guys to do four things. I want you guys to go outside today. And I want you guys to go love a little. That means show yourself some love. Show somebody else a little bit of kindness. Make sure that you are a human being that is worth living in this planet for one day. Do something nice. Next, go out and live a little. Go outside and enjoy the sun or the moon. A little bit of wind, a little bit of sunshine. Go out and also go laugh a little. That is going to be an excellent, excellent source of serotonin. And it's going to help you be in a good mood. And you are all artists. So above everything else, I want you guys to go outside, 
and go draw a lot because that's the only way you get better and that's the only way you improve. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you guys so much and I'll catch you guys in the next lesson tomorrow or maybe tonight if I get really bored. Later, Gators.